Linux capabilities. That's a pretty generic name, isn't it? I mean, what is a capability anyway? My Linux system is capable of doing many things. Editing this video, calculating my finances, doom scrolling my Twitter feed. That's not really what we're talking about. In the old days, before Y2K, around the time I looked like this, Linux permissions were basically root or non-root, or more properly said, privileged versus unprivileged. If the effective UID was zero, it could do whatever it wanted. If not, it couldn't. Now, I'm oversimplifying here, but suffice to say, things were pretty coarse-grained. In the 2.2 kernel, the concept of capabilities was added, which allows for much more fine-grained control of what kind of calls a process could make on the kernel. Take, for example, the venerable ping command. You might be surprised to find that it actually had to have SUID set so that it could deal with the creation of ICMP packets. That meant that the ping maintainers had to really focus on keeping their code clean because anyone finding an exploit in it could potentially leverage it to es escalate their privileges on any machine that it was installed on, and it was installed on a ton of machines. Now, I'm not saying that's the only reason the ping maintainers kept their code clean, but it was a really big deal. Now, ping can simply run with netcap raw capability, which gives it the network stack access it needs. To all the kernel and network nerds out there, I'm ignoring the whole ping sockets kernel functionality because that's a rat hole I don't have time for today. There are dozens of Linux capabilities and figuring out what you need for your application might seem like a daunting task. But luckily, there are a couple of things that may make it easier for you. First up, the folks that wrote the original Docker code from where the container D was born, worked hard to determine a solid set of default capabilities that are flexible enough for most applications, but not so much that you might as well be running with privileged mode. We talked about privileged mode in my last video. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Second, in many, if not most, cases, you can actually just drop all capabilities and your app will often run just fine. For example, here's Apache Tomcat server running in a container as the nobody user, remember, we don't run as root, with all capabilities dropped, and it works just fine. Now, sure, you may be doing things that need some capability added, but it's better to start from this blank slate and then add only the ones you need. If I've piqued your interest and you want to know more about capabilities and their impact on containerized applications, check out the links in the description to a few excellent blog articles that really dig into them. Also, I'll link to a cheat sheet that my colleague Matt and I wrote a few months ago that talks about this along with nine other common security context settings that you really should be aware of. By the way, Sneak's free IAC scanning tools will alert you when a pod is not configured to drop all capabilities. So you can catch this before you even commit or at any point along your CD pipeline. Sign up at sneak.io for your free account and start scanning your manifests today. As always, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe, click the bell, leave a comment, do all the things to let YouTube know that you like what we're doing. See you again in the next one.